Welcome back to Post Projects and Project 818 SRX. It's time. Uh, to say I'm nervous would be an understatement. Um, it's my first time building a motor. Um, I think I did everything right. We will see. Um, I certainly made every effort to. What I've done up to this point, um, I have confirmed oil pressure so I can get uh, oil pressure under cranking. If I continue cranking the starter um, uh, 10 seconds, I can get up to 50 PSI of oil pressure. Now the oil is quite cold, but um, that's a really good sign. The main things I'll be looking at is oil pressure the whole time um, and bleeding off the coolant. So I'll be looking at um, the oil pressure and then coolant and oil temps. And if for some reason I can't keep them under control, I'll be shutting it down. I'll also be looking for leaks. Um, I'll be watching fuel pressure, make sure we don't have any leaks there. I do have my little panel off the, uh, the firewall, so I have full access. If there was leaks back there, there are fuel connections. None of those were loosened off with the engine rebuild, so I'm fairly confident in all that. While I'm checking for leaks and checking on oil pressure and bleeding the, the, the coolant system, I don't want to be worried about tuning idle. So what I've done is I just took my idle base map and just changed it all to 2000 RPM. Uh, I hope to get the idle much lower than that, wherever it seems happy, but if I just set it to 2000, it'll keep running. Um, I've got the, um, the closed loop um, on, so it'll be reading the O2 sensor. It'll, it'll compensate enough, hopefully, to just keep itself running because I'm gonna be checking all those, all those leaks. Um, it, this thing has got tons of assembly lube and Vaseline in it from, from putting it together. Um, that's gonna burn off. I've got new header wrap on the header. I got ceramic coatings. I'm not sure if those smoke at all initially, if they have to do any bake. Either way, there's gonna be some smoke. It's, uh, it's about 10 degrees Celsius in the garage here, maybe 10, 10 to 15. It's uh, about five degrees Celsius outside. So, it's, it's a cold start. Uh, it's 10W40 oil, it's not the 20W50. Um, that's often common. Um, we're not at those temperatures yet, and um, for break-in, I was gonna run the 1040, and then depending on oil pressure, I might just keep running 1040, or I might switch to 2050, we'll see. But, okay, I can't procrastinate anymore. It's time to start it, or at least try, and um, see where we're at. A few moments later. Moments later. didn't start uh, we did see some smoke coming out the exhaust so before I'm gonna glance at the logs see if there's anything of note that would give me an idea why it wouldn't start and then I'm gonna pull the plugs because there's a good chance I do smell fuel it's probably just flooded <laughs> a few moments later
hope the audio is okay because I'm not I don't have my lapel mic on a um, little smoky I'm gonna turn the fan in here and look at those logs so um, <clears throat> I believe the the crank sensor was off by 180 degrees so uh, FFE tells you uh, full function engineering they suggest setting it to um, basically 90th off so 90 degrees um, the uh, talked to an AEM tech and he said that he's seen with that setup on an FD uh, engine that makes good power on the dyno he was at roughly 270 degrees um, so it's a full um, 180 degrees off of what uh, I had it set at which would explain the backfire when I first tried so um, now it was idling at like 400 rpm um, and then died so I'm just gonna quickly look at the logs and see what I got to do to bump that up because um, I'm obviously aiming for a whole lot more than that um, but I didn't want to be playing with the throttle to keep it running I, I'm trying to get the ECU to do it itself so I can monitor and, and, and um, mechanically check over everything so uh, one step at a time So I think I know why the car won't idle without a little throttle input. So if you notice, uh, right here, and this is this is a data log of, of me getting it running, uh, I'm holding the throttle a little bit on there. The throttle is at 15.8%. So right now we are at, for temperature, 25 degrees. So we're right around here. Either way, it should be an idle base position of 80 to match uh, the target. However, uh, we're not matching the target. We got engine speed is 886, uh, target is 1500, and our feedback is maxed out. Now, if you notice, we're requesting an idle position of 80. Uh, it's at 100 with max feedback out, and we're still, it'll die without throttle input. And I was trying to figure out, well, why? So I tried putting in higher than 100. Well, obviously, it needs a higher position. But you can't go higher than 100 because it's a percentage. And um, thanks to, to Scotty, uh, I found out what it's a percentage of, which is something that I probably should have known. But so drive-by wire and the basic the engine setup, uh, throttle control control range. So it's only able to do up to 10%. So I'm requesting 8% throttle. It's using feedback, but can only go to 10% throttle. And to keep it running at just under 900 RPM, we are at 15% throttle. So I'm gonna change that number. Let's see if it's still there. No, that's just YouTube. Um, if I go in the wizards, if I change that 10 to a 20, now, at 80, 80, at 80 idle base position, uh, it'll be around 16% uh, throttle, which should get us around here. We're at 15.8. So I'm just going to double that and then um, see if she'll idle on her own. And then once I can get her idling on her own and just take care of the, uh, the coolant stuff. There doesn't appear to be any leaks. I would have noticed oil leaks by now. Um, the same with um, coolant. Well, coolant system isn't pressured, so there could still be a coolant leak, but I doubt it. 
um, and fuel leak. There's been none of that. So um, if I can get it to idle on our own, I'll keep the feedback on, take care of the cooling system, and then I'll turn off the, uh, the feedback and um, fine tune these, these idle base positions. Uh, and then figure out where she wants, once she's up to temperature, uh, figure out where that happy point is that she wants to idle. Bridgeports are unknown. I've heard of guys idling their bridge ports at 1,000 RPM, and some guys have to be at 2,000 RPM. Um, based off the cold start, I would say I'm going to be between 1,500 and uh, 1,000 RPM. Uh, that's just a wild guess, though. So I'll wait until I get it up to temperature. And oil pressure, look at that, 77. Oil pressure was pretty good whole time obviously it's cold there's 99 uh we're at 1100 rpm like you know 99 1000 rpm it's obviously cold that'll come down but uh that's really good numbers and i never had numbers that good on the old setup again a lot of that comes down to you know the issues that i have with the old engine and, and just how worn it was but all positive signs so now i'm gonna change that uh, per set that uh, drive-by wire idle to a, to 20% throttle and uh, hopefully it'll idle on its own. A few moments later moments later so my plan was to uh, continue working on idle today and uh, try to get it down a little lower but after yesterday it uh, I didn't feel great. There's uh, not, not good enough airflow in this garage that I felt pretty rough. Uh, I think a little, little too much carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, or dioxide, and uh, fumes coming off the, uh, the header wrap. It was, uh, wasn't pretty. I do have a little fan to try to push air out, but I don't have a good way for getting fresh air in. So I think the best thing to do is um, get it outside to continue working on any idling, or at least get it half outside. But I can't do that because they don't have any hubs on the car right now because none of that will work with the six-speed. So that's my next step. Uh, I'm going to work on... I finally got my uh, sweet new brake calipers for the rear end. Um, so I've got to finish fabbing that up, and I'll show you guys that next time. I'm happy. The compression numbers... That one low number, um, I figured that out. So it's not anything to do with the apex seals. They must be good because an apex seal, if there's an issue, will uh, affect compression on two rotor faces. Um, side seals would affect the compression on just one rotor face, which is what I have. So, And it's not low. 99, most people, if they rebuild their engine themselves and all their numbers were 99, uh, they'd be pretty happy. That's my low number. It's not the end of the world. I reused one side seal on the front rotor when uh, I mentioned that in my engine build video because I messed up a side seal. Uh, I measured the side clearance. I didn't think about the fact that um, the length of it would have a little more wear. So that means the spring is going to be pushing that uh, against the iron just a little bit uh, less than a new seal because it's worn down a bit. It will probably still come up a little bit, uh, how much, I'm not sure, but as that seal finds its new happy place, it, I doubt it was installed in that you know, exact orientation before, so as it wears on the rotor uh, iron, or on the, yeah, as it, ro as it wears on the iron, whether it's the center or the front, it, it will probably 
find its 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 happy place and uh, come up a little bit, and I'm happy with that. Uh, it's a lesson learned. I, I will never reuse seals again. Um, and maybe someone else listens to this and, and learns that as well. I know guys often do that uh, if they're doing a rebuild on the cheap, but next time I'll just get a couple extra side seals and uh, if I mess one up, I can chuck it and, and keep going. The uh, <clears throat> All the assembly lube and smoke uh, burned off pretty quick. There was no smoke in, in, in the end. Um, there's no suggestion that it's burning oil. It's got great oil pressure. Um, that the last idling clip it was around 1250 1300 rpm um, and i had made no effort to go lower than that i was just setting the uh the base positions for there so i'll go down a little lower than that i'm also going to try leaning it out it's uh it's around 12 and a half afr um, from what i understand idling is is it's not so much the science that tuning is uh, Every engine seems to have its own little happy place or where it likes to idle. Uh, I've been told by a few to, you know, listen to the engine, see what it likes. You know, you can play with the timing a little bit, play with the AFRs a little bit, and just see where it likes to be smooth. Um, but even at uh, 1250, 1300 RPM, it sounds great, and that's lower than a lot of guys get their bridge ports. And I'm going to chuck that up to um, the style of port. Um, that I got from Eric Seven Specialties and the control of the drive-by wire. So between those two things, it's not idling crazy high like I was worried about. So that's really good. Just want to give a shout out to Scotty305 on Eric Seven Club. Um, he knows this in, in AEM Affinity system uh, better than, than anyone, I think. And he's helped me out along the, along the way. Oh, Right back to 2016 when I was first trying to get this engine, to, the old engine to run, uh, setting up the drive-by wire stuff. Um, he was great help then. And this time, just making the suggestions on the crank angle sensor. Um, and just, you know, give me general advice on tuning the idle and whatnot. Um, he's been a huge asset. I'm by no means a tuner. Uh, I am gonna tune this engine but it'd be naive, naive of me to think that I could do it without help. So uh, thank you very much, Scotty. Initially though, I need to get it on the road. I, I need to have a little break in on the engine. I will probably put a few hundred kilometers on it, uh, varying RPMs and change the oil. And uh, then I'll probably start doing some light tuning up to four or 5,000 RPM. Um, and then, you know, put a few more probably another 500 kilometers or so on it probably change the oil again and then uh, once we're at a thousand say 50, 1500 kilometers start doing some tuning throughout the whole rev range um, and if everything is good then it'll be on track the um, first track i'll be going to is stratotech it's a very small track it's only about 10 minutes from my house it's a karting track that uh, just kind of reopened this year so i'm pretty excited about going there and then uh, if it does well there, then I'll take it back to Castrol where I've driven the RX-8 and uh, really put it through its paces. And I'm excited to see what it'll do. I feel like the car's potential uh, exceeds mine and uh, it'll be quite a while before I'm comfortable and even considering upping the power and switching to E85. Thanks for sticking with me this long and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Hopefully uh, some more wraps next time. Peace.